graphic nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. The hell are you gonna jerk off to? Nothing. I guess I'm not gonna jerk off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, you're not gonna jerk off. All right, where are the cameras? Am I unjerked? <laughs> where is Mark McGrath? Hey, I'm serious. I am not masturbating from this day forward. And if you'll excuse me, I have to get ready for my date with Missy. But you haven't jerked off in nearly 36 hours. That's unprecedented. If you don't do it soon, you're gonna blow, damn it! Your podcast will fast, will fast, will fast. Yeah, it's just a coincidence that you were talking about the Jack and Triumph show and I'm here. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, guy who makes all those unlistenable podcasts over at Smodcast.com, and you're listening to the Two Strangers One Podcast. This is podcasting. You're listening to Two Strangers One Podcast. Subscribe to us on iTunes or on the Stitcher app for Android devices. Please visit Two Strangers One Podcast.net. Now, here's Chris Glow and Paul Pasquillo. Well, hello and welcome to Two Strangers One Podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Paul. And of course, as we get ready to start recording, I'm waiting for you, you're waiting for me, and as soon as I go to get up and take a shit, Paul's like, I'm ready! So I had to finish taking my shit. But uh, you know, hopefully, the listener, the li- no, I don't know if hopefully or not hopefully, but the listeners just may hear my stomach churning through the course of the episode, as you've heard, as we've gotten things ready for the for our recording. Because you've been hearing my stomach go up and down, right? Yeah, I have been hearing that. And it's because, drum roll please, I've lost my job and I'm pretty fucking sick and tired of it. Uh, so what happens was... So you, go I was going to say, like, you haven't really said too much to me about it, so... Yeah, I, I haven't really gone on Facebook about it because it's just like... I mean, one, I mean, you know, yeah, I'm that kind of person. I do share my entire fucking life on. I just, I don't want to deal with the questions and this and that and, you know, people giving recommendations. You know, oh, you should go work here and go work there and... And so here's the situation. So we recorded last Friday and it's been a week. We actually, oh my God, we're actually recording within one week of the, <laughs> of the episode. So we were recording right before the episode, right before I had to go to work. I go to work and all is quiet as kept. And I think I've mentioned this in the last episode, you know, the, for the past couple of weeks, they've been letting large chunks of people go. You know, I, for a little while, I was in charge of this team of like 14 people and they got rid of like everybody on the team except for me and another gentleman. And I was like a supervisor and this other guy, I think like the, the, the rep from the, from the, from the, what's the word I want to look for? Employment agency, uh, look, was looking out for him and he works for the same employment agency I work, I worked for. So him and I were there. Once again, I was a supervisor. He was just a worker. And they brought back like two or three of those people after like a week. And uh, so that happened then. And then there was another purge, I would say maybe like two or three weeks ago, where they got rid of like another 12 people. So it was literally like just me and a handful of people working on the projects, which, you know, during the summertime, uh, you know, and uh, I don't want to say where I worked because, but it, it makes... I'll eventually talk about them if if, things, if they never hire me again. I, I mean, and I don't want to go back. Uh, you know, it's I, like I got fired and it was sort of a blessing and a curse. Like every fucking job I get fired from, it's a blessing and a curse because it's like, you know, I don't really like the job. I didn't really like working there. But it's one of those jobs where, yeah, of course, the demand is going to be a bit more in the summer. And now that it's the winter time, it's sort of like a, a you know, it's a seasonal job for the lack of a better term. But it was never presented as a seasonal job. It was never presented as a temporary contract. I know when people work for staffing agencies, it's like, okay, you know, uh, they guarantee you, you know, as long as you don't fuck up, they'll guarantee you three months of work. And then everything after that, it's like a crapshoot or six months. It was never presented to me as that. It was sort of, you know, as most staff agencies tend to do, which is, and, and now I'm starting to see in my experience that it'd be fucking bullshit. It's sort of like, oh yeah, we, we have, we hire temps and then some of those temps get hired in the long run. Now that being said, like the day, my last day there, I found out two people got hired and that's what's killing me. And both of those people uh, is a guy and a girl. And I think like the girl had maybe three months She's been at, she was at the job maybe three months longer than me. And the guy, I, I, he must have either a month, he was either like a month there before me or a month there after me. I think maybe before, uh, but 
you know, now he's working there. So I was thinking, oh, shit, maybe I'm going to get hired sometime soon, uh, you know, in the next month or two. And that didn't happen. I'm kind of glad it didn't. But, uh, you know, so they just so the the staff agency rep emails me on Friday, I would say, you know, about four o'clock in the afternoon. And of course, you know, the staff agency closes at five. And, you know, after four on a Friday afternoon, you know, a lot of places are pretty fucking dead. You know what I'm saying? So right. and then what pisses me off is that this chick in the past has text messages. So I'm like, why the fuck are you sending me an email? When you have my, you've texted me in the past, you know, she was doing that slick shit like that a lot of people do where, you know, they'll let you go right before the weekend or even worse, you come in on Monday and they're like, oh, by the way, you're let go. Like, you know, they let you work, they, you go through the weekend thinking everything's going to be all right. And so she did that slick shit where she called, she sent me, a t- uh, she sent me an email. So uh, on now I got the text, I got the email Friday night because I don't check my email when I work. So I get my email Friday night and I obviously I'm not going to text her at fucking 11 o'clock at night or midnight so i wait till saturday during the day and i text her i'm like does that mean i'm let go and no answer and i'm like this fucking bitch you know and i understand maybe for saturday's her day off or whatever but on sunday she writes she writes me back she texts me back yes you let go and oh by the way you know there's another place right next to there which i you know i can get you there like for a dollar less an hour now mind you the job that i had before that i took like a dollar fifty cut and now she wants me to fucking go even you know, more. And I said, look, with all due respect, if you can't give me, you know, and I don't want, I don't want to put numbers out there, but if you can't give me this amount, you know, no, thank you. And she's like, oh, by the way, you know, just, you know, update your resume on the website and all sorts of nonsense. I was like, all right. And I said, look, you know, once again, with all due respect, if you can't get me a job with this amount of money an hour, just, you know then don't don't waste my time and i and i guess she took it to heart because she has not fucking called me and i did up my i did update my resume on, on the website just in case what if magically she does she does find a job that you know goes for like the minimum that i'm gonna I, that i'm asking for so you know and I, you know i don't know whose fault it is exactly but you know it it really fucking it's really detrimental to your fucking like esteem you know when it's like you're working at a place and they're like, oh, yeah, we're just going to let you go. Not that, well, you, not that you did anything wrong. Not that you, you know, and it's just like I've been with that staffing agency for like 13 months now. Never took a day off. I'm oh, excuse me. Let me strike that from the record. Never called out sick. You know, when you call out sick, that means you're calling that day. I can't come to work. You know, yeah. Okay. I took a combined four days because on the weekends don't count. You know, I took a combined four days for Comic-Con over the past year, you know, and both of those times I took two separate, you know, two day, two days off. I, I let them know fucking like two, three weeks in advance. You know, I requested and it was not like it was paid time. You know, once again, this is a bullshit staffing agency job. It's sort of like, OK, you don't come to work. You're not going to get paid. So it wasn't like I took vacation time or anything like that or holiday pay or anything like that. You know, I said, OK, look, pay me two days less because I'm not coming to work. So if I've been there for 13 months took no fucking days off, uh, you know, no, excuse me, no, took no sick leave, you know, never was there significantly late. Yeah, okay, you know, if, if you have to be there, you know, maybe like five minutes past the time you're supposed to, but like most places, they give you like a seven minute window or whatever. You know, I was never like significantly late at any of these jobs. And, uh, and, and I'm like, I'm so fucking done with staffing agencies. Like, you know, don't get me wrong. Like, I, 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 I you know, Money is an issue, and of course, if things get really fucking tight, you know, I may have to go back there with my tail between my legs and like, oh yeah, I'll take your fucking job, you know. But I like, I, you know, if I have it my way, you know, well, I'll never have to me, deal with that shit again. Let, let me intervene here. So, this man, what he's not telling you is basically was working another job as well on top of this. Oh yeah, yeah. So the, yeah, that was so, I was gonna I was gonna get to that. <laughs> So yeah, I did. I do have my morning job. I, you know, I work for a friend. Uh, I'm, I'm able to work from home. Now, coincidentally, with this being towards the end of the month, this has been a pa- This has been a very busy for the past couple of days, especially like the 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 last day of the month and the first day of the next month. Like you know, I've worked a combined 18 hours. Like I, you know, <laughs> usually, you know, you would I would only work 16 hours at a regular job. Like I you mean, you every know, day. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I would only work yeah. eight hours every day, you know, uh, so 18 hours, like, that's more than, the, you know, the 16 hours it would be if I was working. The, um, but, of course, that has to do with it being the end of the month and with the job that I'm working, what, 
I guess was my second job is now my primary job. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, it's sort of those, it's one of those deals where, you know, it's a lot of accounts that need to get taken care of before the end of the month. And so I busted my ass and I took a lot of shit done. You know, I got a lot of shit done. This was recognized by my buddy and he's like, look, you know, we'll keep track of the hours that you're, that you're working extra. You know, we'll work on it. Uh, I, you know, we're still like, he's still like on the fence on whether next week I'm going to start working more hours. But it's sort of like the good thing is like once again this is a friend of mine he wants to work with me, so if my hours increase now it's not it's not full time, but if my hours increase I'll be pretty much bringing home what I was bringing home, going out and busting my ass at a fucking door in a in a factory you know I mean it's a little less but if you you know you, if you do the math and I don't have to fucking take transportation and I don't have to fucking yeah. you know I'm not you know buying lunch every day or you know I mean I'm a bachelor sometimes you know you don't feel like cooking I'm going to fucking go and buy lunch or whatever so you know when you take a note you put in those factors now of course right now that's before taxes you know I'm eventually have to fucking I'm going to have to pay taxes on because right now he's paying me as like an independent contract and so I'm going to have to do that all, all that nonsense when that when that comes up but you know my take home is not you know if I get those extra hours my take home is not going to be much less than what I was Working at this bullshit fucking factory. So, uh, you know, and it's, and the good thing is, you know, and I mean this in the best possible way, it kind of forced his hand. It's sort of like, you know, dude, I need this fucking money. He's like, all right, let's see what we can do about increasing your hours. So I've been, you know, even like this morning, you know, before we started recording, like we were, you know, usually we were going to record a little earlier. And I'm like, you know, when you texted me, I was like, dude, I, I give me a, give me like an hour. I have to finish up the work that I'm doing. And then the funny thing is, even when we're done recording, I still have more work to do. But once again, it, uh, all the priority shit's been taken care of. And, and he understands that. That's And that's going to be the beauty of once I do eventually do get full time, you know, there, there's things in the works and a contract is on his way. And, you know, when things come, you know. At least now I'm getting a taste of what it's going to be like to just sit at home. And I mean, you know, I'm not just sitting at home. I'm working. But, uh, you know, to not have to hop in a bus, hop in an Uber, you know. Well, that's going to – see, that's town. the thing. Like, that's going to save you a lot of money because now you're not spending so much money to go somewhere. Yeah. And that's kind of that's kind of a good thing for you in the position that you're at. But, you know, I kind of want to make this clear. Like, you know, you know, when you're at a temp agency – and, again, I've never been at a temp agency, but – um. They, they kind of only just, I mean, your job really is just temporary, yeah. honestly. You're fucking So, cattle. I mean, you getting, I mean, you doing what you did, um, is, is what you should have, is, is what you should do. I mean, you had two jobs, but there again, like, man, you were, you were kind of running your, your, yourself ragged there for a little bit because I, like, you would go from what, 8.30 to like, what, what was it? Like, yeah, I mean, or, I was working for my friend from like 8.30 to 10.30 in the morning. Right. And then there was some days and that's what and that was another thing that like I don't want to bad mouth the place I used to work just yet because uh, I was going in like an hour early every day because I was in charge of that special project, you know, and it was like, you know, and this was Did they finish that special project? Well, that, well, that was when they did that first purge, <laughs> the first purge of people uh, that was uh, them getting rid of a lot of people because they had run out of stuff for that people to do, you know, for for my people to do. And that's, you know, and that's sort of. And that's sort of that makes me fucking like, you know, kind of just look at very leery like, you know, if you why would you start a project like this if you didn't have, you know, you shouldn't have started a project like this if you couldn't anticipate, you know, more coming in, more coming in. And of course, you know, that's the beauty of, you know, hiring from a temp agency, because, you know, you can just let people go. There is no union. There is no, uh, you know, and once again, a lot of my coworkers are fucking ex-cons. You know, people from third world nations, you know, kids. Yeah, and that 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 kind of gets into more of a shitty kind of situation because, you know, if you're if you've committed a crime, a lot of places won't take you. Yeah. And the only place that would take you is a fucking bullshit temp agency like this where you have to yeah. deal with people that treat you. You feel like fucking cattle. I, I that would, That's the best way. I feel like a, a fucking farm animal that, you know, the men they didn't need me. They slit my fucking throat, you know. And, you know, one less person to fucking worry about. You know, and I'm a fucking man with a family. You know, I have a daughter and I'm trying to and it's like, you know, yeah, I have plenty of years to get my shit in order. But but it's I mean, of, yeah. I, I got to kind of just say, like, you know, I'm going to be honest. I mean, I, I, I'm sure your buddy will take care of you, but you were kind of like, I mean, let's see. So you only had like maybe an hour, an hour and two or two between your jobs mm. and then. You were getting home, what, like 11, 12 o'clock at night? Yeah, getting home at midnight. If I didn't have, towards the end, 
I had arrangements with someone to give me a ride home and stuff like that, and it was cheaper than Uber and everything like that but yeah like you know when i was when i was i'd get out of work at like 10 55 and not walk into my door until like midnight you know yeah and then you're probably still up to like one o'clock two o'clock so i mean honestly dude like you were running yourself ragged at that point like me i have two jobs but i only work the two jobs monday and tuesday and then i'm able to recover for the rest of the week yeah you like were doing this every single day so you had to recover over the weekend, but then you had your daughter. Then I had my daughter on the weekend, so, it's, so like, it's like I never get a it's break. It's like man. there's no break. So honestly, man, I, I think this is a good thing for you. Um, I would just be careful of you know being you know you're just gonna have to make sure your friend just gives you a lot of hours because if not, you know it's kind of it's gonna fuck you in the end basically. Well, I mean the good thing you is know? that like w- with the end of this month, like. And this is something I've noticed as I have been working for like the past two or three months is like every month there's more accounts and there's more accounts and more accounts. So well, like, didn't you say like he was building his company up? So yeah. And that's the whole thing is it's sort of like, uh, you know, as I'm like, that's why like on the 31st on fucking Halloween of all days, you know, I like, I, you know, I wanted to make sure every single account was entered before the next day. You know what I'm saying? Like they had, they'd already met their goal. They, he had already he had already met the goal that, and I'm like, no, fuck that, <laughs> you know, I'll work to whatever the fuck, and of course, and then you know what it is, Halloween night itself, you know, and I was home, and I, you know, I don't know if my daughter was gonna go trick or treating, but it was raining and cold, fucking Halloween, night. so I don't think she went out trick or treating with her mom, you know, but you know, and even if they did, like, it would have been on a fucking miserable night, you know, so I said, fuck it, you know, the the the, the weather's shitty. And, and you know what? I went, I fucking, I went out Halloween night and I went for a couple of drinks. So I said, fuck it. I, I've earned it. <laughs> I'm going to go out because I deserve to go out. I'm going to get and drunk. And then you use, and then you text me with your broken English. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm drunk, man. I can't exactly. Uh, you're like, use... you're like saying to me, you're like solo, but solo spelled with like S O L H something else, whatever. <laughs> I'm just like, what the fuck is going on here? You're like, I'm an independent contractor. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> well, I mean, is this, you know, I was, look, you know what I'm saying? I was stressed the fuck out. It's Halloween. I wanted, you know, sometimes you just want to go out and blow off some steam and stuff like that. So, you know, I, you know, I had a couple of drinks and, uh, you know, enjoying myself. You know, I'm going to have to talk to your bartender. <laughs> Be like, he has a five drink minimum. <laughs> and that's, and that's the funny thing is that, uh, I had one of my coworkers, oh, should I say my ex coworker? Uh, you know, we've gone to the bar before and, and the guy who owns the place, uh, he's, he's there all, much nights. And so he's gotten to know me. And then so he saw my, my ex coworker got there before me. And so, uh, and he goes, oh, you know, where's Chris or whatever? And he goes, oh, Chris is on his way. You know, he, I, he's, he, he's not my coworker anymore. You know, we, he got fired. So when I got there, he got us a, a pitcher of beer. <laughs> he, goes, oh, he goes, it's on the house. <laughs> oh, it was on the house because on, you got fired? Yeah. I mean, That's it's awesome. fucking, you know, it's a pitcher of draft beer. I mean, fucking, you know, probably cost him fucking $3 or something. But, you know, uh, yeah. So I was like, you know, thanks. <laughs> so that, that helped get my night started. Uh, so, you know, I mean, am I pissed off? Yeah, I'm pissed off because I feel fucking, I felt it, it makes you feel disposable. But like I'm not like negative. I'm not like I'm suicidal. Not like oh the fucking end of the world. You know. I, I was just trying to say like I don't think that you should uh, that you should like take this as a negative, honestly, because you know I don't necessarily think that they were just how do I put this like they I don't think they were targeting you on purpose. I don't think that I think you were just yeah, one of the temporary of... workers, and that's why they purged you out. Yeah, just a um, victim of fucking capitalism (laughs) but i mean keep in mind too like um and then you're saying like people were hired after like a couple months being there you know if you remember at at one of your other jobs there were people that were hired right away because they were they applied to an ad wherever and then they were just hired you know what i mean well i mean so in that situation that was because the new supervisor knew those guys and he told them to apply to the ad and he hired them directly and like, if that doesn't fucking violate some sort of fucking, you know, but then again, I'm there as a fucking temp. So I have no fucking ground to stand on. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm pre- it, it, it's very fucking it's one of those deals where it's like, it's not illegal, but it's very fucking immoral. You know, right. you, you should have, you know, and ethically, you should have hired all your temps before you started bringing in new people to hire permanents. 
you know. And then what kills me is that my old place, not the one I just got let go from, the one before that, uh, you know, uh, for listeners of the show, Austin, the beginning part of the year was, was, you know, was on the show with us. Austin left that place. One of the girls that they hired after me, one of the girls that was hired before me, that was hired there as a temp after me, but was hired as a per- permanent before me, she left. And then another one of our friends, she left because she, she has a kid or whatever. And like, you know, she wants to spend more time with her kid because now that her kids, you know, reached a certain age or whatever. So that place had like three people leave after they let me go. And I, quite frankly, I would have still been there. <laughs> like, like, like you <laughs> fired the one loyal person that would have fucking stood there, you know, what and about, three other um, people left. What happened with, did, did Austin like just get a different job or? Yeah, I think he was getting sick and tired because what was happening, and this is a weird thing that I wouldn't have complained about, uh, they kept getting, uh, overtime on the weekends, like mandatory overtime on the weekend. And they were like, they were working like 13 days straight. Like they would give them like one day off. And don't get me wrong, that sucks and everything like that, but you know, it's more than what I was making at this last job. And I don't think, I don't, I wouldn't have left the job. On the, on the grounds of, oh my God, there's too much overtime. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It would have sucked because I wouldn't be able to see my daughter as, as much as I wanted to, but, you know, I would have made that shit work. You know what I'm saying? I would have, you know, maybe come in, like, and, and I was doing, when I was working there, there were times where they had us do mandatory overtime, but what I did was well, I went in during the day for overtime, and then I, you know, I'd be exhausted, but then I'd have my daughter in the afternoon and kind of, I mean, it cut into From what I've together. heard, from what I've heard about the company you used to work for, mm-hmm. Um, they basically, the reason why they, I, I think that they're doing mandatory overtime is because they fired all their temporary workers and then they were just like, well, we got to get this shit done. So you people are going to do this. And the, you know, yeah, I could understand why you would be pissed. I mean, I, I understand why like Austin would be pissed because it's fucking, you know, all of a sudden it's like you, um, you went from like having two days off to now, fuck you, you only have one day off, you know? So I can understand that. Yeah. And it's, it's just, you know, it's just, I'm tired of fucking making strangers rich that are like, that I'm, I'm just a piece of shit to them. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, if I'm, if I'm working for my friend, it's a little different, you know, you know, I'm helping him, you know, and, and he's, he's been so far, once again, knock on wood, let me, let me knock on my table. I don't know if it's going to pick it up on the mic. Let me knock on wood. You know, he's been good to me. So, you know, hopefully. Giggity. This will, (laughs) hopefully this will, uh, this will, uh, this will work itself out. And then the good thing is I get to sit at home. I got, I watch Uber. I watch Uber. Excuse me. It says you where my head's at. I've been watching Netflix and Hulu. Like nobody's fucking business. Cause one of the things he also gave me his, his, his Netflix and, and Hulu passwords. So I've just been watching so much fucking TV. Um, let me tell you two shows and and I got to tell you, I'm going to put this out there and I've been watching, you know, there's two shows out there. Well, three. Okay. Uh, the good place. If you haven't, if you haven't started watching the good place, watch the good place. It's very cute. It's funny. Uh, I mean, well, I say, no, it's cute. What am I saying? That show, that show has fun. That show gets really fucking dirty. There's like masturbation jokes and shit. And it's like at eight o'clock, like on regular TV, it's on at eight o'clock on, on, on NBC. I mean, I've been catching it up on Hulu, but, uh, fucking it's, it's dirty. It's funny. It's weird. Like it's, it's sort of like wholesome, but then it gets dirty at times. Um, on Hulu, there's a show called Future. And I tell you, if, if, if I've heard of that, if you have Hulu, and I'm just putting this out there, and I want to say I'm not reckoning, you know, this is nothing that happened as a New York Comic Con interview or anything like that. This is, this is purely just my fucking opinion. If you get a chance, watch Future Man. Like, I'm like eight episodes in, and I fucking love it. I think it's still season one. I think there's only season one. I don't think they've done a season two yet. I hope they get a season two because fu- Future Man is so fucking good. And, uh, Dude, the Orville, fucking Orville is so fucking good. Seth Myers? Uh, Seth, uh, Seth, uh, not Seth Myers. Uh, Seth McFarlane. Seth McFarlane. Uh, holy shit, is that a good show? Like, it, it's one of those deals where, dude, this is what, it, if they were to do Star, I mean, if, yeah, they got Star Trek Discovery. This is, it's Star Trek Discovery. And yes, okay, they have the jokes and it is funny and everything like that. But like this show, it's, it's, it takes itself seriously like it 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 ha- it's it's hard to explain you know it's almost it's a legit sci-fi show that just so happens to have jokes it's not like oh we're gonna make fun of star trek this is uh, so those like those three shows 
I've been getting, and I've been watching other things. I've been watching, like, you know, I've been catching up on South Park and catching up on Always Sunny in Philadelphia and, you know, the Netflix shows like Orange is the New Black and the toys that made us. And, you know, and, you know, I've been watching so much fucking TV because I work, well, I work, I watch TV. <laughs> Lucky enough. I mean, you know, I could divide my attention enough where I could have something playing in the background while I'm doing my job. How many people, how many people at work can say they watch fucking Netflix and Hulu while they're at work? Um, but it's one of the beauties of having Wi-Fi, you know. I guess I'm, make, I'm making up for lost time. I've gone like fucking like, three, four years without Wi-Fi, so uh, it's nice to to kind of like, you know, sit back and and watch that. Um, now this past week, now the one of the things like I had Hollow now Saturday because we're recording this the, the the Friday right after Halloween, like last sat uh, last Friday, which was my last day at work, whatever. That Saturday, like Halloween, kind of starts early. I mean, let's be real here. When Halloween's in the middle of the week, you know, people go out Friday night and Saturday night to kind of celebrate Halloween. You know, I, I'm assuming like in the nicer places where people trick or treat, I'm pretty sure people, kids are trick or treating that Friday night before Halloween or that Saturday night before Halloween. But th- this past Saturday, once again, just like fucking Halloween, cold and raining. You know, I had my daughter, but I was like, baby, we're not going to fuck fucking nasty. Uh, Sunday, we went to the haunted house. Uh, it's the one down in, in Henrietta, the, the Nightmare Manor. Yeah. And so, uh, luckily we got there. The place was supposed to open at seven. We got there at six 45 and I'm like, man, you know, there's going to be a line. Cause every other year we, I've taken her there two years in a row. And every year, like, like the first year we got there, waited fucking like an hour online. And then like, as soon as like that first scare, cause with holding, it's like, you know, it's a, it's a haunted house, but it's inside. It's in sort of like the same place where they have like, uh, the Halloween spirit, you know, like a, it's like a, it's a place where it's inside a a, a, mini, a strip mall, a, 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 you know, what's the word, you know, a mini it's mall. It's in South Town Plaza. Yeah, but I'm saying for people outside of Rochester, you know, it's it's one of those places where it's a strip mall, you know, and where like every year, like the 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 spirit of Halloween, they set up shop in like some old abandoned place that like no one uses for the rest of the year except for spirit of Halloween, you know, in the Halloween time. Uh, it's, and the funny thing is the one here in Rochester is literally like two doors down from an actual spirit of Halloween, but no other place uses, you know, I'm pretty sure if, if a real business wanted to buy it and lease the air and lease the space, they could, but it doesn't get leased. So the fucking haunted house, I guess they keep their stuff there. or Maybe they don't, you know, maybe they pack it up, but you know, they use that same spot for, the, they've at least been using it for the past, you know, three to four years. So the first year you kind of go through the haunted house, but if you get like really scared, or like when someone with me, like I, you know, my daughter's eight now, so she was like six the first time we went. Like she got, she got really, really scared. So there's like little, like they have these doors where you can leave. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're that freaked out and you don't want to walk all the way through, you can leave, and it kind of like takes you to like this little side hallway where you can leave without you know seeing any of the monsters and stuff. So the first year I took my daughter about two years ago, that first scare scared the shit out of her, and we waited on fucking line for an hour, and I'm like, all right, we're just gonna leave. Then we got a little further the next year, and she's like, I want to leave, I want to leave. So then we left. This year, we actually did the whole thing. Um, you know, I don't want to spoil it for anybody. because, And I've noticed every year they kind of change things up. I mean, I've only gone a little <laughs> – I only went one year, I went just a little bit. The next year, I got a little further in. Uh, this year I was there. I'm pretty sure they change it up on the inside, but they kind of keep the same – once again, it's called Nightmare Manor, so it's supposed to be like you're in a house. But that being said, you know, it was like three bucks a per, you know. But, I mean – for what it was and everything like that, you know, and let me tell you, there were, there were two genuine scares and I'm there with my daughter where like, I, one of the scares, like I screamed that I like, I was like, holy fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> and like, you know, and you know, and I'm there with my daughter and I know it's fake and everything like that, but there were like two genuine scares where it, they fuck. Uh, so, you know, for her and stuff like that, I mean, you know, it was it expensive? Yeah. You know, but you know, it's Halloween. You can, you gotta, so, uh, it did the hollow haunted house on sunday now with this past saturday when i had my daughter and this past monday metallica was in fucking town but i just lost my job it's not like i have this fucking money you know they played in buffalo on saturday which i had my daughter and i trust me i played with the idea i'm like maybe i can fucking get two tickets and we both go but like the cheapest the cheapest most inexpensive seats were starting at 120 dollars. so i'm like you know 120 dollars. then getting to buffalo and then plus, like, my daughter, like, she might not even enjoy the show. Then what I'm going to do, get a babysitter, have someone watch her for a few hours, and then go to Buffalo by myself? That's really fucking pathetic. And then uh, then there was a show on Monday in Albany, which coincidentally, my my future, but my current boss, <laughs> my old friend, uh, he went to the show in Albany. 
and he doesn't he doesn't live in New York. He lives further up north. So uh, he brought his son, and it's weird. He's, he brought his thirteen year old son, and like him and I went to go see Metallica back in like ninety. So that was kind of freaky. Like I'm like you're bringing your son to the same show that we went to go see. You know the same band we saw fucking literally what over twenty years ago. Um, so Metallica was in town. I miss them. But then I've seen Metallica like, and I'm not exaggerating here. I've seen them like thirty fucking times. So it's like I'm not fucking missing anything. Uh, you know, the same pyro goes on at the same time. They do the same encore. You know, of course, I still fucking bummed that I didn't see him. But, you know, it's not like, you know, it's the end of the world. Um, what else? All right. So let's do some little news. Then we'll go to break. And then we'll go to all. We'll finish up the, with Comic-Con. Stuff. Comic-Con part two. Comic-Con part two. Uh, let's see what I have here. I have uh, Pete Davidson broke up with Ariana Grande. And that was no surprise. We all knew that was going to fucking come to a crashing halt. And I know you, you got a special place in your heart for Ariana Grande. <laughs> no, I don't have a special place. I just think that I, I was just one of the first people to kind of be like, this girl is going to go somewhere. Watch. I'm not even fucking kidding you. Mm-hmm. And I was right as usual. So yeah. And I mean, I have a 90, she... I have a 90, I have a 99.9% being right rate. So <laughs> just get with me on these shit, on this shit. So there you go. But she broke up. And then like this weekend, I don't know when I'm going to put this episode out, but uh, this weekend Jonah Hill is hosting uh, Saturday Night Live, and they did a promo where it's Jonah Hill, Pete Davidson, and whoever the musical guest is, and the musical guest is like in a you know an attractive singer, and he goes, he asks her, oh you want to marry me? <laughs> and she goes no, and he goes you know I'm three for all or whatever. So at least he's I guess he's in a good space, a headspace enough where they can kind of joke about it. Um, because I think this is going to be the first episode of Saturday Night Live since he broke up with Ariana Grande. But, you know, that means, you know, that means I got a shot now. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh. What's that? Ooh. That's a little, that's a little young for you. <laughs> yeah, she's legal. Yeah, there's grass uh, on the I field, mean, play ball. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, I mean, listen, I, I'm, I, I'm at the ripe age of 34. I'm, you know. If I was to find somebody else, I would have to have it. It would have to be mid to late twenties, because I'm not. I don't know. I'm just not into that bullshit. I mean, maybe. Okay. All right. Let, let me let me make this. <laughs> I'm gonna dig Holy myself sh- a little hole. Oh, here. Okay. I just look. She was born in '93. I graduated. Yeah, I graduated go. from high school in '95. <laughs> <laughs> so, what the point I'm trying to make is, uh, if if. I guess, like, if you were just fucking the girl, I guess that would be okay, as long as she's over 18. But if you're just, if you're trying to be in a relationship with a girl, maybe not. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, obviously she likes crazy guys. I mean, if she got with Pete By Davis, the way, I mean, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's, before we get into more, any more news, what is this bullshit about you, like, hating on women all the time on Facebook? I gotta call you out on the podcast on this bullshit. <laughs> uh, well, it's just, it's the shit that I've been, you know, the, the women that I've dealt with in the past. I mean, I've always been, like... You know, there's always, I've always been, I don't want to say, uh, not as always been, I mean, between my fucking ex-wife and my baby mama, I mean, you know. Yeah, but you haven't, have you had any bad experiences, you know, recently or? Well, I mean, it's, look, okay, fine, I don't date as often as I would like, but like, the girl I was kind of seeing last year was sort of like, you know, like she, the last two girls that I've dated, uh, that you want to say, if you want to say like dated, dated, were basically like just to be with me just because they wanted to be with a guy. And, like, that shit fucking bothers mm. me. Like, I, I, I don't want to be with someone if if it's, it's oh, you're better than just being alone. Because that's not, that's not the right reason uh, to be with someone. I mean, I, mean, I think that, that one girl was generally interested in you. Well, yeah, the one from a couple years ago, the one from, like, two years ago, three years ago, whatever. She was, the one last year was sort of, like, you know. And once again, it, they're nice enough. And I, 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 I'm not bad-mouthing them. But it's sort of like, I don't want to be with someone who, in their mind, it's like, oh, I can be with you or I can be alone. You know, so I'll be with you just to be with somebody. And I don't want, you know, because, I, because you know, I felt like I was kind of like that with Max wife. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think she was sort of like with me because, like, she didn't want to be alone. You know, and then, and then, we'll kill, and then you know, she, she, then she cheated on me. So it's sort of like, you know, if you were, get that shit out of your system. Like, right now. I've gotten I've gotten all the fucking out of my system. I think for the rest of my life. And of course, you know, I say that all now the and fucking out of your system. I've got all the. I mean, as in that, if I met the right person, like it, I, it, it wouldn't be like, oh, I gotta, you know, I wanna, you know, I wanna, I wanna see what other fucking pussy feels like. I, I've gotten that all out of my system. 
I, I've, I, 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 I've hit my, I don't want to say hit my limit. Of course. Yeah. If, if, I, if I was, I, well, if I was able to... to have fucking wonderful anonymous sex with strangers, then that's, <laughs> that's fantastic. But you know what I'm saying? Like if I got with someone that I was fucking seriously in the head, like, you know, like oh, this is the right person for me. I, I don't think for the rest of my life I would ever have like oh I wonder what that girl's pussy I mean of course yes uh, there's women I'm gonna be attracted to like okay like uh, let's say an Ari- Ariana Grande you know if I was in a serious relationship now yeah I would make jokes share yeah. me Lee yeah yeah <laughs> yeah I mean of course I'd make jokes you know it's not like my you know I got in a relationship my dick would fall off you know I yeah you know hey you know I'm a dirty old man you know fucking Ariana Grande was born <laughs> two years before I graduated from high school yeah I'm a dirty old man oh, but like I've 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 had my dick has been in enough places now where if I was in a serious relationship, I, I like cheating wouldn't even the the one. It's not like exactly women are throwing themselves at me in the first place. So well, I'm the perfect guy to date because it's like nobody wants me. <laughs> so because so I'm not going to I mean, I mean, honestly, dude, like and I, I, I tell people this and, and again, I'm right about this shit like. You know, once you, once a guy starts getting into his late twenties, early thirties, you're kind of just like, okay, I need to find somebody to settle down with. And, you know, cause I'm, you know, I'm tired of this just fucking whatever bullshit, you know? Mm-hmm. So, and you know, I, I get where you're coming from. I mean, I, I, dude, I dated a girl that basically said she didn't know what a date was. Yeah. I'm like, how do you not know what a date is? How do you not know what a date is? Oh, by the way, how hasn't somebody taken you on a date? Yeah. I was thinking about that the other day. I'm like, I, I was just like, I'm sitting there going, you know, why did I ever date that chick? <laughs> like, I'm just like, if I had, if I had actually thought about it at the time, mm-hmm. I probably would have been like, no, I, I shouldn't have dated this. I, I probably would have been like, nah, just have sex with her and whatever mm-hmm. comes out of it comes out of it. That's the way I should have been. Mm-hmm. But I wasn't. And, you know, that, that was one of the mistakes that I had, you know, she was just, it was just at that point where I was just like, I st- and still today it confuses the shit out of me. Like, how do you not, how do you, how are you with somebody, but nobody takes you out on a date? Yeah. This doesn't make any sense to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, but I understand like, dude, I, I completely understand your shit. Like, yeah, I mean, I've, I've been girls- burned. I've been burned by like people that I care about. People that I thought I was in love with have burned me. So now I'm fucking like, I'm fucking bitter. And it, and it sucks because, you know, I'm eventually, you know, I uh, say I do eventually meet someone that's right for me. You know, I'm, I'm coming with all this fucking baggage and maybe that's why I'm still fucking single because I have all this fucking baggage. You know, and well, I'm like, no, no, no. You, you, I don't think that you have. If if I can give you my honest opinion, <laughs> my friend, it's not that you have baggage. You don't have. I mean, baggage in the per se that you have a daughter, fine. Mm-hmm. But I mean, those relationships are in the past. You don't. You're not dealing with them. She's not. You don't have to deal with these these women. Mm-hmm. You know. Basically, I think what your issue is is I think that sometimes, and maybe maybe it's different now, but I think sometimes you're your ex- expectations or like what you want in a woman is way up here and you can't see me obviously, but way up in the fucking sky mm-hmm. when it should kind of just be like, let me go come down to this level. I just want this, you know, bare bones. This is what I want. Kind yeah. of thing. I just, I got to get me I like a I, fat lonely girl. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get me. I gotta get me like some fat, low expectation having woman. You know, I, I, mean, I should. I just... I, you know what? Maybe I should go into the relationship with like, look, she only wants to be with me because the only alternative is her sitting at home by herself. And I guess maybe if I get over that hump, because that's what happened to my last two girlfriends. I was bothered by the fact that it's like, oh, you're with me because that's high standard. Like that's. So very I gotta lower standard. my standard. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Yeah, I'm, you gotta lower. I'm your with standard. you because I don't want to be like, way, a solo, and you want to be with me because you don't want to be solo. So. But but see, that's what I'm saying to you is is like you know. You don't have to have like you don't have to have no standards. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying to you is, is you you should have standards, but you shouldn't have like these fucking high standards where you're just like you need to be this type of girl with this type of body with this kind of thing. Sometimes I kind of felt that from you, mm-hmm. and I'm just like I'm like, dude, you just got to calm down and just let the pussy come in. Yeah. <laughs> like you know, I mean it. Some of the best relationships you will have is the girl that you're fucking on a regular basis, honestly. Yeah. So, you know, you just need to understand that, you know, let things happen the way it is. Unfortunately, you have to go on to a, a dating app. There's no way, shape or form that you can't do that, you know. But, yeah. hey, what 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 does it matter? I mean, 
You find somebody, great. You just get laid. What's the problem? You know what's gonna happen. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll hook up with some ver- some girl, and she's like, she'll like start listening to the podcast, and she'll go a couple episodes back, and this will be this episode. <laughs> she's like, this motherfucker. No, honey. When I was talking about that, I wasn't talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> I was making yep. jokes. I was making fun. Oh, so you're just with me because you would rather not be alone? No, 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 honey. That's just a joke. I'm just kidding around. These are jokes to entertain the audience. I love you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> now she's definitely, if she heard this, she's definitely going to be like, I don't know if I want to be with you, Chris. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just, I think, I honestly think that if you are ready and you can bring it down, I think that you can find somebody that that'll be good for you. I just think that you need to just see it for what it is yeah. and just allow it to happen. Yeah. Well, you know? Yeah. Stop having um, high standards like expecting Or find a girl some to really hot milf. Find some really hot milf that's rich and then you'll be fine. <laughs> I think just, I, for a second, I just say, find yourself a hot male. <laughs> uh, ooh. I'm like, okay, things are rough. I don't think things are that rough. <laughs> I don't know if I ever had this conversation with you before. Uh, it's kind of funny we're recording this on a podcast, but, you know, I always made the joke that, you know, it would be it would be kind of funny actually it would be actually better for a man to marry a gay man but not have sex with him just just have that uh-huh and be fucking a woman and that's all and that's all fine what for the tax like, purposes or something <laughs> i mean no like just because like the gay man isn't going to fucking like the, anybody a gay guy's not going to fucking like you know mess <laughs> around he's not going to fuck you know you all your shit is going to be fine you got you pretty much get the same thing as a woman, but you know as long as you're getting the pussy on the side and you're fine, like you know what I'm saying. But then like, I'm I, the I asshole. I was sitting there, I was thinking about this, and, I, and then yeah, I know. And I'm the cheating fuck. <laughs> and I and I said that, and I said that to my like this was a long time ago. I would say this to my friends. They're like, that's not a bad idea, actually. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I'm like, seriously, like if you were able to bang a girl, and you could have like the benefits of a marriage, but then you know, you didn't have, like, you weren't really gay. You were just doing it because, you know, you wanted the, the, the benefits of that, of a marriage. Like, that would make sense, you know? And based on, like, you know, some people can't even get, like, fucking, you know, they want to put somebody under their insurance. Like, you know, you're doing, what what, is, what was that movie with Adam Sandler? Oh, and, I pronounce uh, you Chuck and Larry? Yeah, like, you know, kind of doing shit like that kind of thing. It's just like, you know, you're trying to help somebody out. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. It doesn't mean that you, you're sticking your dick in somebody. You know what I mean? But you got to do the dishes. And by the way, <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> and by the way, I'm not trying to be mean to the gay community. I know some people probably listen that are gay. I'm just saying it, it, it's hilarious that, you know, we put up with a lot of shit as men. Mm-hmm. And we don't, you know, we don't look at things from different perspectives. I think that's where I was trying to go with it. I, I was making that very weird. Like, you don't have to deal with a woman, a woman bitching at you. But you're getting laid by a woman. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. like, you're married to a guy who's not gonna bitch at you. That's basically gonna, you know, hey, hey, look here, let me dress you because you're gonna look a lot better. Hey, that's fine, great, sweet. <laughs> you know, whatever. And then all of a sudden, you know, and then you're just, you know, you're the only thing that you're doing with a girl is you're just having sex. Well, like it's yeah. it's one of those deals where like, and and you know, this is gonna come. I don't mean to be like put this conversation, but like when a girl does that shit, we're like, oh, can we just be friends? I only like you as a friend. I hate that shit. But it's sort I of like with shit. my guy friends, like you know, it's not like my guy friends. If we go out, I'm expected to pay for them, or it's not with my guy friends. You know, with my guy friends, you know, you've come and you've picked me up. Uh, to, to, you know, to, to, you know, for us to like go take care of, you know, if we're recording or whatever, you know, I've never, I don't, I honestly, and I can't think I've ever had, okay, I've had female friends like at work, like give me a ride to lunch and shit like that, but I've never had, I've never, I don't, I don't, I, I can't think of the last time I had a female friend, quote unquote friend that picked me up and like, oh, let's go to the movies or let's go fucking hang out. Let's go to the bar. You know what I'm saying? I used to have I used to have people that I knew that were female friends, and and I'm gonna be honest with you, I was better friends with females than I was guys. I don't know why, but I just had a lot of female friends. Mm-hmm. My thing was is um, when I got out of high school, like I'd be like, yeah, we should we should totally hang out sometime, and then they wouldn't talk, to me. and I'm like, and I come to find out that they thought that I was trying to like get with them, and I'm like, no, 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 I'm like, whoa, 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 stop. Like, stop thinking that I'm like, I'm not, I'm not literally sitting here saying to you, I want to go out with you. I said, let's go hang out sometime. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. You need to listen. Like, that's, that's the one thing I've learned about women is, is 
they don't take words. They, they, they think that every word means the same thing. Mm-hmm. So whether I say hang out, go out, let's date, that's all the same thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I think that, that kind of fucks up shit sometimes. Um, now there are the girls that give you, there are girls out there, and this has happened to me too, where they give you this impression. It's not, I don't know if it's an impression and then you fall in love or it's because of how they are and you fall in love with them because of you want like the best friend mentality kind mm-hmm. of thing. You know, I've been in that place. I, I you know, uh, there have been girls that have given me that impression like because they helped me, I fell in love with them because I was like, this is the type of girl I want. Mm-hmm. I don't want the slut. Yeah, it'd be great to get my dick sucked and, you know, have sex every night. But at least with this girl, she's going to take care of me. Mm-hmm. And that's what I want. I want a girl that takes care of me. That's going to allow me, not just for me to, not just for them to take care of me, but I can do it in the same, in, uh, in the opposite direction as well. Yeah. Reciprocal. So, <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? So friends, I, I hate when girls sit there and you've been in a relationship with them and then they try to friend zone you because yeah. it's like, no, that's not what I'm here for. Yeah. I'm not here to play this game. I'm not here to fuck around. We're, not friends, okay? Yeah. If you want to be friends, we'll find somebody else. That's not why I'm here. Yeah, guys don't if put me. Don't guys guys don't put me to that bullshit. There's the fucking door. Yeah. It's, guys, it's, guys don't the, fucking you know. Guys don't send me mixed signals. Guys don't you know. I like. I don't want to be like you know. I, I don't have a friend. You know. I you know, I've never had a friend you know call me up and you know like ask me for money. I've had I've had girls who put me in the friend zone do that shit. I've I've never had a guy friend ask me to co-sign on a fucking loan. I've had a girl that I had oh. on, on on the fucking uh uh who put me on a fucking friend zone do that shit to me. So it's like you know like guys you know a guy never broke my fucking heart. <laughs> you know. Oh. What I'm so, well, it, that's what I'm saying. Like it, it, in you know in the in a sense like having if you could have a, a relationship like that mm-hmm. with a gay guy, you know I think you know that that's kind of the funny part about it, but. In all seriousness, that's why guys, you know, don't like to be in relationships because, and, you know, it leads me to kind of something I did want to talk about on here is I'm finding out that a lot more girls have mental issues. And by the way, ladies, when you hear this, I need you to listen to the whole conversation when I have this right now, because when I say mental issues, I'm not saying that, oh, you're on your period once a month and you're crazy. No, 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 no. I'm talking about. You're walking down the mall or store or whatever, mm-hmm. and out of nowhere you just start crying. You look in the mirror, and instead of you sitting your, sitting there saying to yourself, "You know what? I look really, I look hot or I look beautiful," you're literally sitting there saying to yourself, "I'm ugly. I'm a piece of garbage." Mm-hmm. Like I've noticed that a lot of girls actually feel that. Like and and it's it just blows my mind about that because it's just like. You know, I feel like a lot of the problems with guys is, is that we don't realize going into a relationship that a woman potentially may have mental issues because let's face it. And again, let me explain myself here. These girls could have gone through a traumatic experience, whether it being calling fat their whole life, a piece of shit, raped in worst cases, mm-hmm. uh, sexually assaulted in worst cases. You know, so you don't know going into a relationship what you're going to be getting. Mm. Um, so if for me, it's kind of like, you know, we can joke around all we want about all this kind of stuff, but we don't realize kind of the situation that goes on. And there are other girls, like you were saying, that are that want just some guy to be there because they're lonely. Mm. But they're also not doing anything to change their life. Mm. They're also not sitting there. You know, the girl that you're talking about, let me explain a little bit more, is the type of girl that just sits on their ass all day long and doesn't do anything. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. they could easily go and try to fi- fi- find the, the weight loss things and um, do those other stuff. And by the way, that's not – when I don't sit there and automatically think when I say you need to lose weight that it's about that you're fucking fat. It's about that, you know, the whole diabetes thing. Yeah. So, you know, it's – you got to keep that in mind. And it's, I just know, I'm just noticing a lot more stuff these days. And it's kind of just, it's kind of like enlightened me to the, the idea that we got a fucked up country. And it's not just because of Trump. It's because of all this other, you know, these women, you know, get treated like crap and they don't know how, they don't know how to react to a guy 
when they're actually gentlemen. Mm-hmm. And it's and it's kind of sad. It's kind of sad. Yeah, it's so, one of those deals where like. You know, and trust me, I'm not trying to be like, oh, things should go back, you know, we should go make America great again. But it's sort of those deals where like, it, it, things are changing. You know what I'm saying? And, and, you know, we live in a, we live in a world of, you know, me too and time's up and all this other nonsense. And don't get me wrong. I'm not, when I say not, I didn't mean it like that. There are women who have legitimate, uh, gripes and beefs about guys who have been absolutely shitty to them in the past. But unfortunately, the pendulum is swinging way too far in, in the in the wrong direction, and it's sort of like you know. Oh yeah. And and you know, don't be wrong. Like oh, you yeah. know, I'm all for you want to be fucking strong, independent woman. Fine, but uh, a relationship takes two people. You know, and you can't be independent and in, be and in a relationship. Way... You can't be independent and in a relationship. Right. Those those two words don't fucking don't come together. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 here's the thing. Here's the here's the thing that here's the thing that I, I think comes back around to where you were saying you have baggage. I think that's the problem is that everybody brings their baggage when they've had something happen to them from somebody else into a relationship. And when that happens, it's, it's, you know, it could be doomed from the start. You know, that's why I think that people need to understand that in when you were saying baggage, like there are certain baggages like having a kid, but then there's also the baggage of having been raped or sexually abused. Mm hmm. I'm not saying that you shouldn't still feel something from that experience. What I'm saying is, is if some guy comes along that's not like that, that wants to treat you like a queen, a princess, like you, like every single woman wants, you need to let that guy have a chance and not take him as what happened to you in a past relationship. Because if you do, you're fucked. And I think guys in the, in, in the, on the other side kind of just need to respect what's going on. And learn from experiences and see women around them. Because in the environment that we live in, and I'm not just talking with Trump, we just have to be more cognizant of how women are, how women feel, mm. um, and just see the situation for what it is. You know? That's all. I think, I think that we just kind of just got to see things from a different perspective these days. And honestly, Chris, like when you do go back into the dating world, man, I think that you should just, like I said, lower your standards. Don't worry, don't, don't fucking worry about whatever you think your baggage is. Mm -hmm. Just, just, you know, just let it happen. You know, if you, if a girl likes you, a girl will like you. Don't force things. Don't get pissed if she's busy because she's got to watch her kid that that weekend or, you know, there's something going on with her kid. You can't be pissed about that kind of shit. Uh, you also can't be pissed if, you know, a girl doesn't want to go out every single weekend. You know, you can't be. Yeah. Now, if she does it all the time to you, then yeah, you get rid of that bitch real quick because you know that she just doesn't. She's just wasting time, and, you know. Well, that's why I'd, what it is. I'd rather be single than being with the wrong person. <laughs> and well, I, no, I mean, I don't think that you're. I don't think that. I don't think that. I'm trying to think how I can say this. I think that you sometimes think that every woman is the wrong per- is the wrong girl, <laughs> and I think that you need to kind of just. Take that, put that to the side and just let things happen and see what happens. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, I'm not trying, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings or anything, but I think even people that have heard this podcast too would probably say that, you know, your standards are really high and you just need to let things, and I keep repeating myself here, but it's the truth, you know, just let it happen. Just let the, what's the worst that can happen? She says, you, you ask some girl out and she says no. All right. Move on to the next one. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. what happens if you have sex with a girl a couple of times and she moves on? Uh, you got laid. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, what, what's the worst here that could happen? You know, you're not in a rela- you're not really officially in the relationship yet. So there's no hurting. The yeah. best girl, the best thing that can happen to you is a girl saying to you, I'm not interested. Yeah. Instead of fucking around with you and just using you and then being like, oh yeah, I'm done with you. Yeah. <laughs> So, but, uh, yeah, so we should move on. Yeah. <laughs> and let me, let me just double check my, my notes. I think, I think we kind of got everything that I wanted to talk about. Uh, oh, uh, well, <laughs> this is, this is stuff that I kind of put in the notes after my notes when we just, when we started to record. You don't have porn on your computer? Nope. <laughs> the, co- the computer. I love you, how this is like speaking of women and whatever. Speaking of women, the computer that you record, the record, you record your podcast, both this and the Tsunami Faithful podcast. Okay, uh, so. So I guess to keep it, to so keep it from you... getting any viruses or something, you know? <laughs> so. 
this is this is kind of funny. Like, okay, so this is this laptop that I bought, uh-huh. and this was about a year ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's probably one of the best PCs I've had. It's a, it's a really good laptop. You, I don't know if I've if you've yeah, seen. There it. There was a whole episode where you rubbed you. The, oh, you the mean audience heard like you physically rub the fucking. <laughs> <laughs> the laptop the yeah episode. i mean I, I i i love this this computer uh it makes streaming so much easier for us tsunami wise mm-hmm. uh and i just i just i i love using it so in the back of my mind i'm like what's the one thing i don't need to be doing with this computer so that way it stays that way mm-hmm. well i'm not gonna watch porn on it <laughs> so <laughs> obviously there is like no trace of porn on this computer um, so people are probably like, well, does that mean that you don't watch porn? Of course I watch porn. I'm a fucking guy. Of course I watch porn. Mm-hmm. Um, so all of that's done on my phone, but it's like, you know, you got a balance. I know, I know, it kinda, I know it kind of, <laughs> I know it kind of blows your mind. Like, I know you're in silence right now. Like how the fuck does he not watch this on his computer? Well, I mean, it's yeah, when I didn't, when I didn't have Wi-Fi in my house, yes, I absolutely streamed porn on my phone <laughs> or if i was in a wi-fi spot i would download porn and then just watch it later on my phone oh <laughs> I, speaking of porn you know, what, you know what this asshole did ladies and gentlemen you know what this asshole used to do when he would come over and use the wi-fi just before he left he'd be like hmm you know what let me download that porn that i've been mining to see oh yeah yeah when yeah when i would <laughs> yeah when we would record when i'd went over to where you were staying and and and, and watch porn i mean I record part of our corn podcast and watch porn <laughs> <laughs> and it was one of those deals where like uh, like if I if I did the long save, there's you know like it would be a save on the computer, and it would take a it would take a couple minutes. So I'm like, all right, if I got a couple minutes, it's an ample amount of time to download at least two or three pornos. <laughs> so I have some fresh material for the week. <laughs> oh my god, like that was that shit was just hilarious, and I'd just be like, and <laughs> the funniest part about it, Chris was just like, you're like, I don't understand how this computer doesn't have any memory. I'm like, um, maybe delete some of your porn. <laughs> Like I don't know, maybe maybe I was in a I, I was in a wife I was in I didn't have Wi Fi I need I I needed you know I needed <laughs> plenty of space for porn, um so I think with that we'll be back with more dick and fart jokes if you're still listening after this. This episode of Two Strangers One Podcast is brought to you by Comics Etc. Eleven Fifteen East Main and North Goodman at the Hungerford Building, door number eight. Find out more information at comicsetc.biz or like them on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash comicsetc1. Did you ever see a film at such a young age it left you traumatized with cinematic wounds? Oh, necrophilia. Oh, God. Oh. It's a dead issue, man. Don't, don't push it. Cinema PsyOps is a weekly podcast documenting an ongoing experiment on the mind of an unwilling test subject. No one should have to watch this movie. Oh, no one should have to watch this. No one should have to watch this movie. Surprisingly, it's not a topic that a lot of people really want to tackle. I'm shocked, Prudes. I know, really. Right? It's the next sexual frontier that no one wants to explore. I am, in the most sincerest of senses, disappointed in you. It takes a powerful goddess like Connie, jam her arm down the monster's throat and kill it. I'm still tripping out over that. Even as a kid, I was like, I gotta find a girl like that. Every week, I, I get a new look of disappointment that I never thought I could get it's out of here. unimaginable. At 12 years old, you should not be watching this movie. Obviously. At 13, you should not be. 14, you shouldn't be. I'm not entirely sure even 17-year-olds should be watching this movie. Just because you're offended by something doesn't mean that you have the right to demand that it doesn't exist. Watching this film again, I had all of this like little nerd glee with everything Dude, that kept Little history up. doll yeah, popping up absolutely. at you. So I totally loved this film. Hey, I know why you you know, couldn't see that. It's because your brain's warped watching this shit at 12 years old. Yeah, this is this is a rough movie. I told you ahead of time when we were getting ready to do it that it was. How did you watch this shit at 12? Because physical wounds heal, cinematic ones don't. Listen to Cinema Psyops. Click and hit, enhancing the experience for all recreational smokers. Click and Hit is a one-handed portable vaporizer. This smoking pipe has a compact four-stage design, complete with a built-in, windproof, butane refillable torch lighter. The large burn chamber holds your stash of legal herb or pipe tobacco. Click the button to ignite and inhale as usual. When you are done, put it back in your pocket for later. Smoke anytime with the touch of a button. No more carrying around grinders and tins. 
pipe, rolling papers, and even your lighter at home. The Click and Hit cordless vaporizer is no bigger than a normal cigar, making it the world's smallest and most discreet vaporizer. It's perfect for use in small places or shared rooms. It's efficient, getting five to eight drawers from your packed chamber. It's affordable at just $19.95 each. Buy three and the shipping is free. Buy four and you get the fifth one free. Visit www.click dash the letter n dash hit.com that's click and hit.com and now for listeners of two strangers one podcast you can use promo code strangers and receive 10 percent off your purchase at click and hit.com that's promo code strangers for 10 percent off your purchase and we're back all right paul this is the second half it's been like oh my god shit oh no it's oh, in a couple of days no it's pretty much a month almost to the day of uh, New York Comic Con 2018. You know, once again, I had a great time. It wasn't as super great as I thought it was going to be. But, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of the last thing we spoke about. Because I feel like the last thing, because I, I could have sworn, yeah, we did Friday. We did, we did Thursday, Thursday, we did Friday. Friday. So now we're on to Saturday. Oh, okay, all right. That's okay. I was looking Which at my notes. Which was the busiest like, day, and I, I made you guys run ragged. So, continue. yeah. And that was, okay. So, on Saturday, when we did Comic Con, and and this is going to be a funny thing for people to watch the video, and okay, so Saturday, uh, with the weather being a little warmer than I expected, I, I I broke out my old pair of like camouflage cargo shorts. So we're we're at Comic Con, and 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 I only have this because this is first in my notes. Uh, while we're at Comic Con, uh, the interview that we had was actually like uh literally a mile away at the Anime Fest that they ran concurrent to Comic Con. Which I had said I'm not too I wasn't too jazzed this year about the Anime Fest. Hopefully, they they'll get feedback and make it better next year. So that, not saying not to go next year, but I mean I don't think how <laughs> I don't think how it could get any worse because when we went to Anime Fest, like it was literally like a warehouse that they set up like three different areas where people were watching. I don't know if it was movies or or anime sh- TV shows or whatever, but it was three like screening areas where people had. So you could sit down and in, 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 in a chair and watch a screen and stuff like that. And then, like, it was just a bunch of booths selling crap, you know. And once again, I mean, I'm not an anime person, so maybe that's maybe they had cool shit there. That, but it just seemed like the traditional, you know, T-shirts and just you know, cat ears and fucking you know, bandanas and you know, we're just weird, the weird usual anime shit. So uh, you had sent us for for, for an interview. With uh, Amanda Miller, who does the voice of uh, Baruto, and uh, Colleen O'Shaughnessy, who's been done, who's done ton of tons of voice, and actually both these actresses actresses have done a lot of voice work. But I mean, uh, it's just so we go and the quote unquote green room was like in the back of this warehouse. It was they had like no light. They they literally had like curtains cordoning off the area. So it was just curtains with like a couple of lamps in the area and they had a table for food and, and a nice couches and stuff like that. But like, and then plus the area we were going to record or the area, the green room was like literally behind the screen. So they got these speakers blasting the audio to whatever anime that that was playing. And I'm like, there's no way we could do an interview in here. It's dark. It's loud. It's, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, so I was like, all right. So then, like, so we're like, we're walking around the fest. I'm like, oh, maybe we could go here. Maybe we go there. So, like, I think we, fi- like, w- what we finally ended up getting was a decent interview. And it was, it was in like a, like a, the eating area. And just luckily enough, they, there was enough, there wasn't enough, pe- there were people there, but not enough to be in our way for us to like take over a table and say, okay, we'll co- record from here. We'll have the anime fest in the background and, and stuff like that. Okay. So this is something that hopefully you well, didn't get shown in the, you won't see in the video. And I, I covered it up when I got out of the Uber to, to, uh, you know, walk and just walk to anime fest. Like we were there. I, I ripped a hole in my shorts. <laughs> These are, and these are like my cargo shorts. Uh, you know, I've had these things for years and it, and like in the front, like by the zipper down my crotch, like to the middle of the fucking thing. And I'm over here going to do an interview. So luckily I had my, I had my, uh, uh, my sweater with me. So I tied my sweater around my waist, but now most people, when they tie a sweater around the waist, they were tied in the back, like, you know, nineties, you know, grunge Nirvana style or whatever. I tied mine in the front. So it looked like I, like like my sweater was lo- obviously longer than my my shorts, 
looked like I was wearing like a weird kilt or something like that. So when I'm doing this interview with Amanda Miller and Colleen O'Shaughnessy, I have this giant hole in my fucking shorts when I'm when That's I'm when interviewing them. So I mean, you can't. I don't think you can. Well, obviously you can't see in the interview because I think you know the way the camera's set up. But understand when you watch that video, I'm also fucking. If I seem more stiff than usual, I think I'm terrified because I have this big fucking hole in my. Um, they were wonderful. Because we had started the interview, and I guess between the stress of looking for a place to fucking interview, because like you know we couldn't we, that, where we where the where the quote unquote green room was wasn't gonna work, so we're looking for places. And, oh, that's not gonna work. That's not gonna work. I got a big hole in my fucking shorts. You know, you know, just the stress of doing an interview. Also, I, I like I had started the interview, and I said, look, guys, if it's can we just stop and and just start again? And then and then the good thing is when we did, you know, take two, it it went. A thousand times better than take one, um, but once again, if I sound, if I, if, if when the interview comes out and you see how stressed out I am, how it was, um, and then plus, you know, just like just going to Anime Fest, like it was sort of like I was so like let down by what they how it was, but you know that was that was good. Um, then after that, or was it before that? I don't know. I, I I don't have my like I have my notes, but okay. Then we got to interview Josh Greeley. Now uh, those who may not know Josh Greeley. He does the ADR uh, on Attack on Titan. He plays Armin on Titan on Attack on Titan. Uh, he's he does voices on Black Clover. And there's another big one that he does. Um, but Josh Greeley, the, one of the nicest fucking guys, you know. And it's funny because it's one of those deals where you know, yeah, I go and I look at his fucking IMDb and like this guy's like fucking ten years younger than me. You know, it's like, obviously, you know, obviously these animes, you know, and, and don't be wrong, I'm glad he's successful, but it's like, here's a guy who's, you know, 10, 15 years younger than me, you know, has a successful career in anime, he's been in fucking some of the biggest animes out there, you know, not only does he, is he voice talent, but he's also, you know, doing production work, so at least it's one of those deals where, like, he's he's never not going to be working. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's not like, you know, voice actors, they kind of have to wait for work to come. You know, if you're also doing the ADR and script work and shit like that, you know, and you're replacing the voices and, and you're, you know, doing the, the, the American script dubs and stuff like that, uh, you know, super talented, you know, the guy's fucking famous. And then now, mind you, when we went to go see Josh Greeley, uh, it was at the, the, the autograph tables and it was before his time schedule to be at the autograph tables. And then like, we kind of had to squeeze it in before he went in. But, you know, we got there well ahead of time and there was already a line. There were people there sitting there fucking patiently. Uh, I think we got a couple pictures of it. Uh, you know, p- people, in cos- people in cosplay as like characters that he's played in the past. Uh, super nice guy. Did you put, and that's, I, so the best of my knowledge, that's like the only interview that's up right now is the, is the Josh, uh, Greeley episode. Unless you, are there other interviews you put up? I'm going to be know? putting another one up. Oh, okay. Uh, but once again, cool fucking dude. You know, as soon as we started talking, you know, he, he added me on Twitter. Uh, he, uh, and then we had, I had mentioned like last year I interviewed Ian Sinclair. He was like, fucking, you know, Ian Sinclair is like my best friend. Uh, we were talking, you know, he saw my tattoos. We were talking about Metallica. Like, this is like a dude I could fucking hang out with. Like, I swear to God, uh, you know, uh, I, you know, and the same thing with Ian Sinclair. <laughs> you know, like, these are two guys that I think like even, despite their fame and stuff like that like these are dudes i could fucking hang out with but of course they're fucking jet setting and doing the cons doing all the cons of course the work of you know like you know what you know like what we should do one year we should just be like ian we're gonna meet you at a con and just for the whole weekend we're gonna hang out wow (laughs) i think that would be i think that would be awesome and i feel like he would be totally down for that but see like like what i like about ian is he's he's still like a fanboy because like he's like He's like, hey, I loved this anime as a kid. Oh shit, I'm in this anime now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, and, would okay. you, and and same thing with Josh Greeley. Would you, well, well, no, is he's is he on Dragon Ball? He's on Dragon Ball Super, right? Dragon Ball Super as uh, Grand Kai, Grand Kai, or not Grand Kai? Um, God, I just put this. Oh my God. And that was one what of the questions it? I asked him. Was like, I, you know, oh, Grand Priest, I think it is. Mm-hmm. This is is his character. He's the guy that basically is in charge of all the uh, Grand Kais. Mm-hmm. And he's like, yeah, I got, I got, you know, I get home after school and watch fucking Dragon Ball Z. And it's like, yeah, when Toonami came out, I already started my career. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was, I was a man with a job. And I'm like, oh yeah, when I was, you know, and I remember, I mean, I remember Toonami obviously more for, for, uh, Megas XLR, but you know, it's like, I, you know, it's, oh yeah, I'd come home from school. It's like, God, I feel like a fucking, but, you, yep. but but the funny thing is like a guy with guys like Josh Greeley and Ian Sinclair, like I'm having conversations with them about like heavy metal. 
Like it's like it's one of those deals where obviously yes, an anime fan would see these guys and fucking jizz in their pants because oh you're an anime, and I'm like, and yeah, and I'm like, dude, they're also fucking metal fans, and that's sort of, you're... and it's weird that I'm a guy like I'm not into fucking anime yet. I'm I'm meeting these guys that are fucking you know, part pardon the phrase titans in the fucking anime world, and I'm like, yeah. Well, you, know, you were talking cool. about you were talking about how, um, you met. Or how how there was a fire on Saturday before oh, you talked to Josh, and that was okay. That was okay. So that was uh, all right, and that was in my that was right next to my notes. All right, so before the Josh Greeley interview, uh, we went to go see this thing called Twisted Tunes. Now, Twisted Tunes, uh, it, do yourself a favor if you if you're not for concept, go on fucking YouTube. Also, set aside an hour for each video, if not more. Uh, Twisted Tunes is a thing that they do at a lot, at a lot of the major cons. Well, they'll get prominent fucking voice actors, you know, cartoon voice actors doing like their biggest and most famous voices. But what they're doing is they're reading a script to a movie. And, uh, you know, I've seen them do the Matrix. Oh, Talking Tunes. Uh, no, this is called Twisted Tunes. No, uh, t- no, Talking Tunes is the Robert Paulson, uh, podcast where it was Robert, what Robert Paulson does, they do like a little five minute version. Twisted Tunes. It's fucking an hour, an hour and a half. And like this, like it was because since it was New York Comic Con, it was only about an hour. Oh no, it was, excuse me. It was about an hour and a half because it was the complete, it was a, the complete like time for a panel. Um, but, but it's not like they're asking, they're not answering questions or anything like scene to scene. Okay. So like on this particular, uh, one of, of Twisted Tunes. All right. It was, uh, Janet Varney from, uh, you know, yeah. Uh, what's Legend of Korra. Legend of Korra. All right. Maurice LaMarche was like, you know, fucking, you know, Tiny Toons and a million other things. Steve Bloom from Cowboy Bebop and a million other things. Um, I don't know his name. I don't know their names, but both of the actors who do both Billy and Mandy, and I don't know their names off the top of my head, but I mean, obviously, when you hear the guy who does Billy from Billy and Mandy, he does a billion other voices in cartoons. And the girl who plays Mandy. So uh, Billy and Mandy. Uh, Phil Lamar from Samurai Jack. And, uh, you know, once again, a million other things. And I, I like, I'm more familiar with Phil Lamar from like the early seasons of Mad Team. Um, and there was like one or two more people there. And, and like, even like the guy who was hosting it is like a traditional voice actor. But he, what he did is, uh, the Maurice LaMarche was sort of brought on as like a surprise guest. So when they brought on, uh, Maurice LaMarche, the, the host kind of got up from his seat, let Maurice sit down. And so, all right. So they were doing this one. They were doing, uh, the movie Clue from the 80s and and what they do is they'll read a scene and they're like okay uh janet you're doing uh and then like he, he'll also have him do like other voices like he'd had janet varney doing like homer simpson uh then like phil lamar he had phil lamar do like chris rock and barack obama and and uh, what's the guy from uh, uh from 30 rock uh black guy um why's he got to be a black guy <laughs> The only black guy on 30 Rock. Yeah. Uh, you know, we'll go get everybody pregnant. Uh, uh, Tracy Morgan. Uh, <laughs> uh, then he had, you know, uh, Steve Bloom. He did, uh, Steve Bloom actually does a really, a really good Elmo, <laughs> but, but dirty Elmo. And that's the whole thing is when they're doing these, <laughs> dirty Elmo. when they're doing these, they're throwing in dirty jokes. They're doing, like, it's called Twisted Tunes. And, and the guy, he says it like three times in the beginning. He goes, if you have kids here and you're going to be upset about them hearing curses and, and dirty things and dirty and you and you, please leave now because it's going to get dirty. It's going to get raunchy. You know, he goes, don't send me fucking, don't send me your, 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 the, the, the therapist bills in the future. So, uh, so, you know, uh, Steve Bloom was a fucking deep, rich voice <laughs> also does a pretty good fucking Elmo. Um, but once again, the Billy and Mandy, the Billy and Mandy guys, they did a, you know, he does a bunch of voices and oh, and a guy who does Billy from Billy and Mandy also does Zim from Invader Zim. And, you know, Billy and Zim are kind of the same voice. Um, and Maurice LaMarche, you know, he did, uh, you know, the brain he did. Uh, he's done a bunch of voices. <laughs> so, you know, right. they're reading really clues. Okay, so about 10 minutes left in the fucking panel. Uh, some, I hear someone screaming, hey, 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 hey. And it's a big room. It was, it was the main room at Comic Con. It turns out the fucking popcorn machine was on fire. <laughs> and, you know, like, you know, and I don't know if, you know, someone left something in there. So, when, when I heard the screaming, like, I'll be honest with you, like, I'm such a trained New Yorker, like, I don't give a shit. I'm like, you know, I don't, I hear someone screaming, I don't care. Could have been a fucking active shooter. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah, whatever. You know, I'll, I'll get up when I hear people screaming and yelling. Uh, so 
like no one's really paying attention. Then like then like the, a wave kind of goes through. Like oh my god, and, like and, like it makes its way towards the front of the room. This is a fucking the, the popcorn maker is on fire. So and when and okay yes there was smoke coming from it. It wasn't like it was a danger to the building. It would I mean you know once again yes it's a fire inside a room that has I want to say about three thousand people in it. So okay yes I mean it's no joke and it is a serious matter. I mean you could laugh we could laugh about it now because it was a, such a small contained situation. But you know, then like, so the way, then like, you know, you know what causes that, right? What's that? Is it like some asshole put the oil in first and not the seed first? Oh, okay. Oh yeah, you can. You know so, so in, on the side of poppers, it always says if you've if anybody's ever wondered this, like it says, make sure you put the the seed in first and then the oil. Mm-hmm. It's not because they're just you know they just want you to do it a certain way. No, no, no. It's because if you don't and you let the oil sit there. By itself, it will catch on fire. Ah, yeah. And and you know, and remember, you know, for events like this, they probably it's probably just like temp, <laughs> temp workers. <laughs> it's probably there people probably. there just for the weekend who don't know how to work the machine or don't know how to fucking follow rules. So luckily, I mean, luckily, thank God, no one got hurt. It wasn't like the place was filled with smoke, but it, it was enough smoke where everyone was like, "Oh, okay, let's get the fuck out of here." Luckily, there wasn't a panic. And then the funny thing is, like, you know. uh there was like a legit, you know, over there, ladies and gentlemen, please uh, make your way to the door. You know? And then like, and then, and then the funny thing is like, as the people got up and we calmly are making our way towards the door, it's like, and how about a round of applause for all our actors on the stage? <laughs> so like, we're leaving, we're, we're evacuating the area, but we're also giving the people a, a round of applause. You know why Steve was there, right? He's promoting his, um, uh... He does this voice actor thing now where he, uh, oh yeah, you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, like, yeah, for you to be a voice actor. So apparently he was doing a couple classes at, at New York Comic Con as well, so. Ah, hey, more power to him. I mean, you should. Look I think that's his, how just, he's, like, making money these days, yeah, so. Look at his fucking ID page. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you know, the guy's been, I mean, I'm not exaggerating when I say probably hundreds of cartoons. Um, all right. So, that, so yeah. So then that happened right before the Josh Greeley interview. Now, mind you, and I'm telling him all this stuff before the interview about what's going on. And then, uh, then the funny thing is then like other actors come up to him. There's, uh, there was another, there was another voice actor that came, a voice actress that came up to him and I didn't know who she was. And, and, and Matt knew who she was and I feel bad for it. But the funny thing, like she's talking to him and like, did you hear what happened? Just what happened in the big hall? And he's like, what? He goes, there was a fire in it. And then like, she, and then I'm like, yeah, it was the popcorn maker. And she goes, I heard it was an electrical fire. I'm like, I saw the fucking popcorn maker. <laughs> I saw smoke billowing out of the popcorn maker. Uh, it was that, you know, but it just shows you how like people, you know, and they get bad information. Um, I'll have to ask Matt who that was because I'd be interested to know. Yeah, uh, she was another famous voice actor, uh, or uh, you what, know, famous like in the world of. Was anime. her name Colleen by chance? Mm, Might have been. She was kind of uh, uh, on, the, she on, black the, on the thicker side. Let's just put it like that. She had black hair. I think so. I'll have to show you a picture, but I think uh, I think it's if it's who I think it is, then yeah, you yeah. should have just grabbed her and been like, ah, oh, interview. <laughs> yeah. But we were so and, and, yeah, were and so we were pressed for time, but yeah, because we had yeah. to get because we just left the panel with shit was on fire. Then we got to Josh Greeley, who he gave luckily gave us a couple of minutes before he had he had to go out and do autographs. And once again, there was a line of people waiting for autographs, you know. And then plus we also had to rush out of there to get to Anime Fest to do uh, to hand, interview Amanda Miller and Colleen O'Shaughnessy. So uh, so that's all that part. Um, we got a chance, and then uh, earlier in the day we did the roundtable interviews for uh superman excuse me the reign of the supermen and for those who've been following the dc animated movies you know they did they kind of did the death of superman again there was superman versus doomsday a couple years ago uh this is sort of like a different timeline it's more in the timeline of of the of the current uh because you know the, the 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 dc animated movies are kind of following their own sort of uh timeline their own sort of connected universe so this is the reign of the supermen where in right now Superman is dead in the universe with the death of Superman. So it's about, you know, Cyborg Superman, uh, Steel, uh, which was, you know, from, from the, from the Shaq movie. <laughs> you know, the, not, you know, the, the Shaq movie said it was like a sad, you know, hopefully one day they'll do Steel right. But, you know, Steel, Cyborg Superman, uh, uh, Superboy, and why am I, why am I drawing a blank on the last one? Um, shit. <laughs> The four Supermen that kind of came to power after Superman died, you know, the, the was there the Black Superman or no? No, no, there was the there was there was the one that there was the Terminator, 
Wanda, like, what the hell is his name? Oh my god, oh my god, that's, a blank that's on his... Cyborg's... No, that's well, there's, Cyborg. there's, there's Cyborg's a... Superman. There's Steel's... Is, is his name just Steel? Yeah. Okay. So there's oh my that. god! I can't. I I should. I should fucking. I, my. They should rip off my fucking stripes because I fucking. I should know this. <laughs> um, You're gonna have to look that up real quick. Yeah. Reign of the Superman. Okay. And then the whole thing is that, like, and the whole thing is, I have all these. I like. I, I don't. Know, I don't have all of them. I have a bunch of the comics. Um. Okay. So you have Superman, Steel, Superboy. Oh no! Sorry. I'm looking. I'm looking at the wrong fucking. Um. Don't look at Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah, and it's like ah podcast edit. Uh, no, it's that's I I'm so ashamed that I don't know the fucking I don't know the four guys that. Yeah, okay. So there was Superboy, Cyborg Superman, and the Dark Superman. Oh, the, what the, that's what I'm looking for. The Dark Superman with the with the Dark Superman. Yeah, there was okay the Eradicator. That's his. There was there was. Uh, oh, he's gonna be in that one. Yeah, the Eradicator was a was a, a Superman clone. That's what it was. Okay, there we go. The Eradicator was a, was a Superman clone. Cyborg Superman was a half man, half robot who who you know tried to pretend to be Superman. Superboy and Steel. There we go. That's I knew the Eradicator. I was like, I'm trying to remember what the Eradicator was. I was confused. The Eradicator with uh, Cyborg. But yeah, so uh, those are the those are the four guys. And I feel so bad for not knowing that right off the top of my head. Take away my fucking geek credits. Um, yep. So with the roundtable interviews, we got to do, uh, we got to interview James Tucker, who I interviewed last year. Uh, you know, spoke to him again this year. You know, I like James Tucker. He's a nice guy. He's very knowledgeable. He seems a little like he doesn't want to be there. Like he's sort of like annoyed with the whole thing. Um, the same thing with, uh, there's the, the same guy we interviewed for, uh, the Constantine, uh, City of Demons, the, 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 the character designer, Phil LaRusse, Phil Barusa. Both of them seem like they don't want to fucking be there. Um, Sam Liu, good guy, uh, Jim Krieg and, uh, Tim Sheridan, uh, both of those are screenwriters. Uh, Jim Krieg, uh, for those who kind of follow this stuff, he's a great guy. He's super funny, super animated. He's super like, he, he's a nice guy. And, uh, Tim Sheridan was a nice guy. Uh, then we got to interview this woman, Tox. Okay. I hope, uh, forgive me if I get this last, her first name was Tox Olagundoye, Olagundoye. Olagundoye talks who uh for other people would also know on on in the modern DuckTales the the new version of DuckTales right now she's the voice of Mrs. Beasley or Beakley or whatever that version <laughs> I don't know <laughs> um and she's she's playing Cat Grant in this she was super nice you know she she you know a legit British actor because we were talking about for that for the first ep- before the episode uh of the new Voltron there's a black actress who's doing the voice of Princess Alora and I got, you know, I got nothing to fact, I got nothing against a black actress doing it. I just don't like her British accent. This, this woman, this, this Tox Olugunde, <laughs> she has a more legit, <laughs> I, you know, you know, these people like, you know, they're, they're like born in Africa, but like raised in England or something like that. Uh, you know, she's, she has a legit, like, she should have gotten the job of Princess Alora. She has a, you know, uh, but she's doing Cat Grant. And then, uh, then the, the interview that I was looking forward to the most, uh, Nyambi Nyambi, who, uh, he's the guy from, uh, Mike and Molly, who owns the diner. And I believe his, the character in the show, he's from Africa. Um, Nyambi Nyambi, who, uh, in this one, he's doing the voice of Martian Manhunter, but in past, uh, DC projects, he's done the voice of the, of the John Stewart Green Lantern. And, you know, and I had met him two Comic Cons ago. He was there as a, he was there as like a visitor. He wasn't there to do, uh, panels. He was there, uh, it was a thing, uh, about called, you know, Blurds. It was called, uh, Afropunk, Blurds and Afropunk. And it was Blurds being black nerds and Afropunk. And they had two of the guys from that band in Living Color, you know, from the nineties. And so he was there as just a person in the fucking room. And I, and I recognized him and I took a picture with him. And it's funny, here we are like two years later and he's there as someone, you know, being interviewed. And of course the guy was on Mike and Molly and shit like that. That's nothing to sneeze at. And he has a couple other film, he has another, a couple other, you know, TV credits and stuff like that. Um, but you know, he's doing the voice of Martian Manhunter. But, it, and the funny thing is like all these other interviewers, I mean, obviously the writers and the character designers, they know the shit. Uh, so the voice actors, some of the times the voice actors, like they kind of know comics, but not really. Fucking Nambi Nambi, that motherfucker was into it. He used to watch the fucking Justice League cartoon. He used to watch, you know, you know, he was a good dude to talk to because the guy knows his shit. 
And, you know, and he's, he's living the fan dream of fucking, you know, watching the cartoon and now being part of it. So that was, uh, <laughs> all of that was Saturday. Um, Sunday, uh, Saturday, and what I do Saturday night, we went out, Saturday night I hung out with some friends, some old high school friends. Uh, came out. We went to a, we went to this little steakhouse and, and, you know, across the street from Madison Square Garden. So, you know, there was, you know, and my friend, he, he, he makes good money. So, <laughs> so he, you know, like I paid my share, but, you know, I don't mind, you know, if he would have had me, he would have covered me if I didn't have a, <laughs> if I couldn't pay. Uh, so Sunday we had the Midnight Texas, uh, panel. Uh, we're recording this on Friday. I recommend to people, if you haven't gotten into Midnight Texas, uh, get into it. If you are, are a fan of True Blood on HBO, it's from the same writer. Um, uh, what's him call it? Uh, John, uh, and I, how come I don't? Charlene Harris. Charlene Harris, the same writer who did True Blood, uh, did another series of books called Midnight Texas. So this is basically True Blood, but on NBC. So obviously you're not going to see dicks, you're not going to see tits, you know. But it, it is. It's a great show. I, you know, I remember the girl I was seeing last year, we watched it together. Like she refused to watch the show unless I was there because it, it's, it's a scary show and it's about vampires and angels and like the main character, he can see ghosts. It's, it's you know, his, 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 his grand, it was, it's kind of inherited to him from his grandmother had these powers and then now his grandmother passed away. It's not really a spoiler. His grandmother passed away. So now she visits him and stuff like that. So it's like a, a whole town where all these supernatural uh, beings, uh, live, you know, once again, vampires. So I got to interview, uh, Peter Mensa. And I guess most people would know Peter Mensa from that scene in 300 where, uh, they are, this is madness. And they're, this is Sparta. He's that guy. <laughs> uh, Peter Mensa. Um, and the whole thing is, you know, since this show is about like, man, everyone on the fucking cast was like, okay, I'm five, eight, you know, I'm average height. Everyone on this show was fucking six foot tall or over. So I felt like a fucking shrimp interviewing all these people. Um, I got a, I got a chance to interview Francis Arnaud, uh, who's, who's the uh, main person on the show. Uh, Ariel Keeble, who plays the assassin. Uh, there's like, you know, she's like the only like normal human being on the show. But when I say normal, she's the only person without superpowers, but she's like a fucking hired uh, assassin. Um, and then Charlene Harris. I was not fucking ready for them to be for Charlene Harris to be there, the writer of the books. You know, they didn't, that wasn't in the press release. They weren't expecting. So I kind of had to pull an interview out of my ass when I asked her a bunch of questions, but, uh, we'll be releasing that. Song. Um, okay. So then after that was the Cobra Kai round tables. Uh, and once again, the, you know, we, we, they didn't have a chance to, I think there was, there was too many people doing video interviews. So I, I was happy enough doing with the round table, uh, Ralph Macchio, William Zabka and, and shit. I, I know they, they hit. Cobra Kai recently had, they recently hit some sort of, uh, milestone, uh, and YouTube Red. Um, I'm gonna look it up right now. And this was, I mean, this literally happened like earlier this week. So apparently a lot of people are enjoying the show to the point where, uh, ah, shit. Uh, long story short, thousands and thousands of people are watching Cobra Kai. So, uh, you know, and that's, you know, that's a big, that's a big, uh, thing. That's a big get for YouTube Red. Uh, for them to uh, to have Cobra Kai uh, have such a, a a huge following now, uh, Ralph Macchio, good fucking guy. The kid, he still looks like a kid. You know, this is a guy he was, he was in his late teens. You know, in the early eighties, he's older than me, and he's fucking. He looks fantastic. Uh, William, you know, I I still want to call him Billy Zabka, according to the the press release. They want him to call you William Zabka. Um, you know, he was in just one of the guys. He was in uh, Back to School. Uh, he always plays the bad guy. <laughs> he always played the fucking, you know, the, the, the villain of all these movies. Uh, once again, it's one of those deals where it's like someone who's, he's usually plays a scumbag in the movies, he's usually some of the nicest guys in the world. Uh, it was really good meeting them. Uh, if you have a chance to check out Cobra Kai, it's a great fucking show. And then like they told us, uh, they're like literally like he goes, you know, we're going to get done here. We're going to go to a hotel room. He goes, and he goes, then it's on a plane and we're going back to LA to film. So like we literally got them in the middle of filming. Uh, Cobra Kai, but both of them looked fucking fantastic. Um, and those were all the official things. Um, you know, out on the floor, I got a chance to meet Lita from WWE. I saw you, little fucking bastard. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I have such a crush on her. And then, like, you know, and then funny, her and I, we had like a little two minute conversation about like how I, I used to go to WWE New York and stuff like that. Um, I got a chance to meet Marv Wolfman, and for those comic book fans out there, he's like the creator of the Teen Titans. You know, him and uh, George Perez. And it's so weird because, like, 
we're going down Artist Alley, and at this particular, and it wasn't like he was sitting there all by himself. When I got there, he was sitting there all by himself. By the time I left, there were people surrounding him. But you know, I think he just came back from a break, and he's sort of sitting there for a moment. And I'm like, that's fucking Marv Wolfman. You know what I'm saying? And like, you have to understand when you walked into Comic Con. And I don't know if you remember this from last year. To the left, like as soon as you walk into Comic Con, all the way to the left, DC kind of carves out this whole big, you know, DC takes over a whole corner of what they're right. saying. So here they are, and DC's promoting the, you know, the DC Universe app, their streaming app, and it's a wonderful thing. And a big fucking sign, Titans. You know, I mean, the, the big, I mean, the big, big sign was for Aquaman, but you know, uh, next to that, there's a big sign, Titan. And here's a guy who fucking created t- the Teen Titans. And he's kind of sitting by himself in fucking an artist alley. And once again, it's not, you know, I'm, I don't want to paint the picture that bad because by the time I left him, there were people surrounding the table. But, you know, I'm like, oh shit. So I got him. He, auto, I had him autograph. I kind of, you know, I have a special place in my heart for, for Cyborg. I had him sign. I, I, I bought a print from him, had him sign it. But it's just sort of weird how like someone who, like, you know, we wouldn't be there. <laughs> if it wasn't for guys like him and he was kind of just sitting there minding his own business i mean he was at artist alley it was like i was harassing him and did the fucking... he uh did he say anything about teen titans coming back uh no we didn't uh i, I kind of like he seemed he's an older gentleman and he's sort of like you know uh, like like it, in order he was he was very polite but like he's just seemed very out of it i guess would be the best way to put it you know <laughs> you know so that was, you know, and once again, it was just fucking super cool meeting him. I got an autographed print from him. Um, then, uh, now when I was walking down Artist Alley, I was with my buddy Louie, who plays Zombie Mario. Um, we got a chance to meet Peter David. Now, Peter David, he, he's written a billion fucking comics. Um, he's written a bunch of, like, you, and also, like, when they do, like, novelizations, like when they do books based on comics, he's done that. He's written episodes of, uh, I want to say D Space Nine. I'm trying to think. What's the other one? Babylon. No, he's done. He's not. Excuse me. Not DC Nine. Babylon Five. He's written for. Um, I'm saying the guy's a, a, a famous sci-fi comic book writer. So I'm there with my friend, you know, Louis Zombie Mario, and so Peter David and I were having, you know, once again. Now the funny thing is when we got there, there was a guy chewing his ear off, and then the funny thing is the guy's telling him a story that he's told at fucking panels, and that's the one thing that sucks when you do with fucking fans like that, like. They're telling you shit that you already know, but he was too nice to kind of tell the guy to get the fuck out of his face. <laughs> and like, luckily by the time we got there, like, the, like he was kind of trying to wrap up the conversation with that guy. But here's like, once again, here's a guy who's done all this kind of like genre stuff, but he could not look at my friend Louie. Yeah. Like my friend Louie dressed up like a zombie. Like Peter David is like literally like shielding his eyes. Like he did not want to look at, he's like, he's like, I, I, he goes, I can't look at you. It's disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> it's really fucking me up right now. So uh, I thought I thought that's kind of fucking funny, you know. A guy, you know, his career is fucking writing stuff. And once again, it's not like he's a horror writer or anything like that. But you know, you would think being in the genre, it wouldn't bother him at all. But like, he was fucking physically disturbed by having my friend Louis stand there. Um, so that was kind of cute, you know. Uh, for two seconds, I got a chance to meet Scott Snyder, who's a big time writer in DC. Um, you know, he's, you know, the, the, pretty much the, the whole current run of Batman he's written. Um, and then, uh, Ivy Doom Kitty, uh, for those who follow cosplayers, she's a, a, a thicker woman, I guess would be the, the most politically correct way to say it. But I mean, that being said, she's also very sexy, very voluptuous, got a chance to meet her, you know. And of course, in this situation, you know, you, you, you pay for a print that she autographs and you get to take a picture with her. Um, went to the she booth. That was kind of cute. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to it on Netflix, uh, next month. Or should I say later on this month? Uh, went to the Mortal Engines booth. Um, and then my, my one last thing on, uh, on, on, well, not really. That's sort of, that's sort of my Comic Con experience. Um, I, going down to New York City, they have this thing called Uber Pool, which is, it's, you know, like we have Uber here in Rochester and we have the traditional Uber. Uber Pool was something really interesting where it's sort of like a ride share it's it's still sort of uber but what it is it's cheaper than a regular uber because what they do is they'll pick up other people on the way so like while i was on my way to like the jacob javits center like the one day they picked up this one girl and then on the way there like it you know her job happened to be on the way to jacob javits you know i'm pretty sure a computer does all the algorithms and it's like okay well you know if you're on the way then we could pick this person up um two of the days that i was there 
I took an Uber pool with guys that were going to Comic Con also. So it's sort of like, okay, I'll pick up this person here, this person there, that person there, and we're all going to Comic Con. So that was pretty fucking cool. Like I've never, you know, they don't have that here in Rochester. Rochester, but then again, right. our our we don't have enough people using Uber for for them to have. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's that's my whole fucking Comic Con experience. And this is a long ass episode. We're making up for lost time here. Um, is there anything else you want to address? Well, while we have our wonderful pe- people, hopefully still with us. <laughs> hopefully still with us. They're probably. <laughs> Um, so, uh, on Twitter, um, sorry. Uh, I mean, basically right now, if, uh, we just put out a new track, music track called Jericho, uh, just based on Attack on Titan. It's inspired by that, I should say. Say it Um, again? You guys should go pick it up. What's it called? Uh, it's, 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 it's called Jericho. Oh, okay. It's, uh, it's based on, it's inspired by Attack on Titan. Uh, this is little, uh, little thing behind this. We actually presented this track to both, uh, Funimation and, uh, uh, Adult Swim to see if one of them wanted to take it. That's how good this track is. So, mm-hmm. um, you guys should go listen to it. Basically, if you stream it on Spotify or you stream it on, basically, if you stream it on Spotify or if you, purchase it through iTunes or Bandcamp. You're basically supporting the artist and that's what we really want to do. Mm-hmm. So uh, please do do that. Uh, if you watch it on YouTube, do do because uh, the music track is on YouTube. Uh, um, you'll that actually also gives us money. Let the well, ad so let the ad play. Well. <laughs> let the ad play. Turn off your turn off your ad blocker. Exactly. <laughs> so. Uh, that's pretty much all I wanted to say. I mean, uh, we'll have more interviews. I'm going to try to put one out tonight as this interview we're doing on a Friday. I'm trying to try to put one out tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's basically it. Yeah. And I think it just, just, just honorable mention, just everyone's out there playing Red Dead Redemption part two and I want to get it so bad. And you know, once again, I mean, I, I lost my job. It's not like I have money to go out there and buy a video game, but as soon as I have some fucking money, I'm going to go buy Red Dead Redemption too. And that and, uh, Spider-Man. Because those are the two games everyone's fucking playing right now and seems to be. But from what I understand, Red Dead Redemption, which is basically Grand Theft Auto, but in Old West, they said the main storyline takes 80 hours to beat. So, like, even if you're fucking, you know, and that's not, and that's not you including were, wait, side quests. You were saying what video game again? Red Dead Redemption 2? Yeah, okay, so the, I, I was watching this. You know what? It, it says it sold $725 million in three days. Yeah, and and rightfully so, because... And I, I, I'll be honest with you, I've never even played the original Red Dead Redemption. I played uh, Red Dead Redemption Undead Nightmare, which was sort of like a DLC, but like it, it got so popular that they released that alone as a game. And I got to tell you, I enjoyed that alone. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, and it's not, you know, I just, I don't have fucking time to play video games, but I had a well, lot of fun playing Undead Nightmare. So I can only imagine, and then I've, I, you know, I have friends sharing videos online. You know, it's, that's what I was gonna say. Like, I, I think a lot of the reason why it probably was so successful mm-hmm. was all the fucking hilarious ass videos they were on fucking uh, Facebook and everywhere else. Because there's one video where you come up to a lady, you're on your horse, and you come up to a lady, and you're about to do a side quest, mm-hmm. and the steer just hits her out of blue, out of the blue. <laughs> Oh yeah, and it's and, and once then, again, it's 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 like it's a Grand Theft, it's it's like Grand Theft Auto Five, uh, but in the Old West. And when I say that, it's like these are fully realized worlds. These are, you know, what I'm saying like there's there's so many people working on the project where, you know, uh, you know. My favorite, uh-huh. my favorite is the one where, uh, they had that video where the, the guy skins the rabbit, so he's like, oh well, you know what? I'll just uh, shoot something my size. So he starts shooting at the. At the bear, and the bear just like charges him and like mauls him <laughs> to death. It was hilarious. I'm just like, okay, this 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 definitely works. Yeah. So. And the one I keep seeing is the guy who gets off the horse, accidentally hits the wrong button and punches his horse in the face. And so like yeah. he, like he gets off the, and just punches it. And once again, you know, I mean, not that this game fucking is. It's it's not there to promote fucking violence or whatever, but it's the it's the wild west. I mean, all types of crazy shit happens. And, uh, you know, it was really, you know, this is, these are fully actualized worlds, um, you know, a billion side quests. And that's not even, that's not even counting the fucking DLC that is eventually going to come out over, you know, over the line, you know, for the next while, I'm pretty sure they'll have a couple DLC. Look at Grand Theft Auto 5 still fucking 
Grand Theft Auto Five came what? Came out what? Fucking four or five years ago, and people are. I still see shit. I still, you know, this weekend, you know, download this DLC and do this. You know, that game has lived for five years and has made Rockstar so much fucking money. And I'm pretty sure that's going to oh, yeah. happen with this, you oh, know, yeah. with Red Dead Revolver, Red Dead Redemption. Oh, of course. Too. Revolver. <laughs> you know, and, you know, Red Dead Redemption was Red Dead, Re- no, Red Dead Revolver was the original game from like, you know, that was the, like, and then Red Dead Redemption was sort of like, you know, that was, Red Dead Revolver was like, the, then Red Dead Redemption was like the, the upgrade or whatever, or, you know, the next game, and then Red Dead Redemption 2, but, you know, like, it's got people like, redemption so much that you know they, they they're they're furthering that line. uh but once again just playing you know red dead redemption undead nightmare which i'm pretty sure they're they're gonna have to do that with this one uh they'll have another one you know and it was basically zombies and shit like that so uh, you know i want it i want it but then again you know like you know it's what it's like sit at home sit in my ass and play video games but you know if you're gonna be sitting at home on your ass playing video games might as well be a good one like red dead redemption 2 or yeah. or spider-man uh, marvel spider-man um I can't believe I got this whole episode without having to run out and t- have to take a shit. <laughs> or or getting a phone call like, oh, my ride's here. Yeah. Someone did call me, but it was probably a fucking, you know, I'll call back as soon as the episode's over. I'm pretty sure. It's, yeah, uh, let's end this episode so I can eat. Yeah. Um. So let's wrap this up. That's, That's what, what she, she said. said. Please visit two strangers one podcast.net where you can find all things show related. You can find links to our iTunes page if you have an iPhone, iPad, or iPod. And download our episodes there on iTunes if that's how you get your if that's how you get your podcast. If you don't have an iPhone, an iPad, or iPod, you can download us on download us on the Stitcher app. That's S T I T C H E R, the Stitcher app. And you can do what I do when you're in the Wi Fi spot. You can put on Listen Later and download uh, in a Wi Fi spot. So then when you're out, you don't have to kill your battery or your data and listen to the episodes that way uh, on uh, on the Stitcher app. And those are, that's for Android devices, but I believe it's also for I, I, Apple devices. And then, of course, you can listen to us on our main hosting site, uh, SoundCloud. You know, shit, they just hit me, uh, you know, about a month ago, they hit me for the new year's worth of fees. So, God damn it, get on there and listen to all the episodes, download them all, because shit, I'm paying for it. So, um, you can find us there. I do make the episodes available for download. Um, let me see. You could find us. We want your money. We need your money. But if you can't give us a dime uh, until I get a chance, until I get five minutes to myself to put you out, you can't a, get a dime and steal it from from Chris. Yeah, you can. Uh, you can uh, share and like our page on Facebook. Let us let your friends know that you're listening to us. Say this is a great show. They're pretty funny. The guy spoke two hours about fucking how he can't get laid and going to Comic Con. Um, and then uh, lower standards. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> And you can uh, uh, catch us there, uh, share and like our episodes, share and like our page. Uh, we have our group page, the Two Strangers One Podcast Network. You can find us there. Uh, we still haven't fixed the Twitter issue, but we're at Stranger Podcast. And if you want to write to us, and I checked right before the episode, that scumbag hasn't written to us. You know, he could, he could now write back and call me a piece of shit without having a job. But, you know, instead of having two jobs, back to just having one job. Uh, Oscar hasn't written, but uh, if you want to write to us, you can write to us at two strangers one podcast at gmail.com, all spelled out, two strangers one podcast at gmail.com. Now, for the episodes that are available on Stitcher, if you want to listen to any episodes before that, all of them have been uploaded to YouTube. Just go on YouTube, search for two strangers one podcast, and listen to six fucking years worth of podcasts on uh, YouTube. You can find my stranger vlogs. Um, I'll be releasing uh, more videos from comic-con when i get five minutes to myself and and you could also listen to my audiobook odd i see a tale from the road also on our youtube page uh that's all i can think of sir i acquiesce the floor to you what is it gonna be all about you <laughs> so when I, let me get my shit out of the way now you can say all right you, you can say. find me on twitter at uh paul Pascrillo. you can email me it's paul Pascrillo at you know, faithful.com uh, if you're on our Discord, if you're on the Toonami Discord, you can just, uh, just at me at Paul Pascrillo. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. Okay. We certainly hope you guys enjoyed listening and had as much fun as we did recording. Thank you for listening to Two Strangers, One Podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Paul. Don't be a stranger. Peace. We're out. Bye. You should be fapping Ariana Grande. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go, man. Go ahead. You want your Double here? jackpot. What is it? It is a self-published book by Christopher Cologne. Chris Cologne? Smells good to me. But, 
<laughs> Look at her. That broke that fucking cold little exterior. He's like, hee hee But it is spelled C O L O N. Him punny. But. <laughs> Double Jackpot is a book about a comic book artist, Eric, who is in a loveless relationship with a materialist. I feel you, Eric. Lynette. I, 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 oh, fucking. Are you oh, sure I didn't write this? <laughs> Uh, I, I smell sounds hauntingly familiar. He starts cheating on his girlfriend with a more creatively, su- sorry, creatively supportive woman, Nadia. Well, I, I gotta meet her. Where's the Nadia? There's your summer girlfriend. Summer Nadia is Nadia. Nadia? Yeah, I think Nadia spelled with an A. All right. Both Lynette and uh, Nadia play the double jackpot, the largest payout in Lotto history. Much like the recent Powerball, both girls play his birth date as the winning re- as the winning numbers. Eric is now stuck between two of the country's richest women. Who will he choose? It's not that simple. This is a clever fucking idea, yeah, man. Is. Look at her, fucking. She's impressed. I am. Summer. She got some summer reading. Uh, Christopher uh, Cologne smells real lovely with an original idea. This is. I've never heard this before. I haven't either. This is a self-published book, much in the indie spirit as Kev's Clerks. Oh, you don't even need to name check me. This is just a good idea. You could stand on your own, man. You don't even have to be like, hey, remember Clerks? This is nothing like that. <laughs> this is way more original than Clerks. This is a good idea, man. Why didn't I think of this? I need something to read. This book is part of the Comic Books Heavy Metal Video Games Trilogy Book 2. Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, coming soon. Right on, man. It's part of a trilogy. This is the first part. Way to write, man. He's seeking a literary agent. Motherfuckers, anybody out there? There ain't no literary agents listening to this show. I assure you, sure. Sure. I assure you, sure. But somebody know a literary agent? Hook a motherfucker up. Chris Cologne come up with an original idea. I should tell Raskin. That's a good fucking idea, to be honest with you. That's a fucking rom-com right there. Megan, get Raskin on the phone. <laughs> Isn't it possible to get Raskin on the phone? No? Yeah. I want to run it past him, man. I want to, and if it happens, I get a taste, Chris Cologne. I get a, a whiff, if you will. The book could also be ordered on www.lulu.com. That's lulu.com. That's, I understand that. I just want to spell it out. <laughs> <laughs> Normally one says it, that spells it. Still, lulu.com. What is that? Do you know what it is? I don't know. All right. The book could also be ordered on www.lulu.com. Search for Double Jackpot Christopher Cologne. A paperback version of the book is $15, and a PDF file is only 5 bucks. Five dollars yeah. is insanely inexpensive. Fifteen is not even that bad for a hard for a paperback version. No, this is a million dollar idea right here. Like a, a fucking a movie about a dude who fucking is stuck between two chicks, both of who play his birthday and win the lottery. Come on, I come! Like I it. can see that trailer. Chris Cologne is on to something. Nobody else can smell it but me. I'll read it. Thank you. I'm gonna make that smelly joke. I know on. you're trying to get me to laugh again. It worked once. <laughs> Double Jackpot is a self-published book by Chris Cologne, man. It's the first book in his comic books, heavy metal, video games trilogy. Book two, Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, should be coming out soon. Get all the information. Chris Cologne, like a motherfucker. I and will his totally book, read this. Double Jackpot. I'm serious. I'm going to recommend that to fucking Raskin. That's, how is that not a movie? You know what I'm saying? This could be a sexy movie. You could do an R-rated version. There could be nudie in it. and You could sell them fucking both chicks. Maybe a little penetration. Maybe a butthole shot. No butthole, no care. I would like to formally apologize to Christopher Cologne. Right no, now, sex but... sells. <laughs> Chris Cologne will appreciate that. He's like, thanks for throwing a few buttholes in there, man. Don't forget to check out two strangers one podcast.net, your one stop resource for everything show related. You can find links to subscribe to us on iTunes or on Stitcher. You could also find links to buy my book, Double Jackpot, on two strangers one podcast.net. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, you're cool, and fuck you, I'm out.